Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and yes, we finally made it to the end of the film. The baddie has fallen off the cliff or been run over by a truck or shot in the face or just, I don't know, dipped in acid, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're dead, they're gone, huzzah! Or are they? <laughs> With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 movie characters you didn't realise actually survived. Number 10, Chris D'Amico, Kick-Ass 2. Now, Kick-Ass 2 was nowhere near as good as the original, that needs to be said, but it does end with Chris D'Amico, aka the, um, <clears throat> the mother seemingly meeting his grisly end after he falls into a water tank and is violently mauled to death by a shark. And by the time the film ended, most viewers probably would left thinking, ah, it's not as good as the original and probably just didn't feel like sitting through the credits and potentially waiting for a possible post credit scene, but alas, leaving early means that they would have missed out on a little known end stinger, revealing that Chris is in a hospital after having inexplicably survived his encounter with the shark. And that's not to say that he's alive without considerable cost, though, having lost both of his legs and also, um, his penis to the hungry shark. Though this was clearly intended to set up a third film, the apathetic audience reception and its resultingly mediocre box office performance quickly put the kibosh on those plans. Number 9. Creighton Duke Jason Goes to Hell The Final Friday Though the ninth Friday the 13th movie, Jason Goes to Hell, is in no way a good movie, it did give the world Creighton Duke, the cowboy-esque bounty hunter hired to hunt down a resurrected Jason Voorhees. In the film itself, Duke appears to meet his maker after receiving a fatal bear hug from Jason, seemingly crushing his back. That's the last that we see of Duke in this movie, though in a 2018 podcast interview, director Adam Marcus, who also helped assemble the film's story, confirmed that Duke actually survived his brutal run-in with Jason. He said, Creighton Duke didn't die. There's the answer, he did not die. The way I shot it was to give you this moment of, oh no, but honestly, he exhales. But you don't really see the light go out of his eyes and to that end, my new production company Skeleton Crew is basically doing something to resurrect Creighton Duke as a standalone character. Though Marcus's planned Duke spin-off movie hasn't come to fruition, fans at least have the comfort of knowing that a beloved franchise character is somehow still alive and kicking. Number 8. Hannibal Pacific Rim Pacific Rim would be a lot less fun without its colourful cast of wacky cartoonish characters, including among them Hannibal, who's played by Ron Perlman, a black market dealer of kaiju organs. Given his brash persona and ridiculous attire, including a pair of prized gold-plated shoes, it was just a matter of time before Hannibal got chowed down on by a kaiju, and indeed, late in the movie he swallowed whole by an infant kaiju in a great comic relief moment. The rest of the movie plays out with Hannibal believed to be dead, despite the kaiju which ate him itself dying moments later. Yet those few who bothered to stick around through the first batch of CGI end credits would actually learn of his true fate. In the mid-credits scene, a very much alive, goo-covered Hannibal can be seen cutting his way out of a dead kaiju, where he seems much more bothered about one of his missing shoes than the fact that he was almost eaten alive. Annoyingly, though, he didn't return for the sequel Pacific Rim Uprising, allegedly due to scheduling conflicts, but still, he's alive and out there somewhere. Number 7. Moriarty – Young Sherlock Holmes 1985's ludicrously underseen cult classic Young Sherlock Holmes offers up an early post credit stinger more than 20 years before the Marvel Cinematic Universe made it an expected staple of glossy tentpole movies. The film ends with a surprise reveal that the villainous cult leader, Ertar, is actually in fact Sherlock's friend and fencing teacher, Professor Wraith. In the climactic fistfight, Holmes gets the better of his former teacher who falls through the ice into the freezing river Thames below, seemingly drowning in the process. But at the end of the closing credits, a mysterious man can be seen checking into an inn while signing himself in at the desk as Holmes' all-time arch-nemesis, Moriarty. We then cut to Moriarty, who is revealed to be, and explicably alive, Wraith all along. Though most turned the movie off long before this scene played out, it's absolutely vital considering how fundamentally it reframes the entire story. Number 6. George Harrison – Yesterday Danny Boyle's rom-com Yesterday revolves around a struggling musician, Jack, who after being hit by a bus during a global blackout wakes up to discover that the rest of the world hasn't heard of the Beatles. The film's big third act twist is the reveal that John Lennon is actually still alive, having lived to an old age due to not becoming famous and subsequently not being murdered. This is all well and good, but also implies a brighter future for another character, albeit an unseen one whose existence is nevertheless implied. This is the 
the other departed member of the Beatles, George Harrison, who died in 2001 at the age of 58 from lung cancer. Within the film's reality, it's not just the Beatles who have been wiped from existence. Everyday objects have also disappeared, such as Coca-Cola and even cigarettes. So, given that Harrison himself cited cigarettes as the likely cause for his own throat cancer diagnosis in 1997, which his family believe led him to developing lung cancer a few years later, it's probable that the removal of cigarettes from this timeline would have saved Harrison's life. And I know that it's not a sure thing, of course, but given that Harrison also received lung damage from a 1999 stabbing by a mentally ill fan, which is generally accepted to have exacerbated his lung cancer, it's again highly likely that, without being a member of the Beatles, he'd be alive and well into old age today. Number 5. Deadpool – X-Men Origins Wolverine Well, here's a character that just about nobody actually wanted to survive, but damn it, they did anyway. X-Men Origins Wolverine was rightly dragged by fans from numerous reasons, not least the fact that it reworked fan-favorite superhero Deadpool into a generic, genetically enhanced super soldier who possessed a grab bag of X-Men abilities while also looking nothing like the actual Deadpool and, unforgivably, had his damn mouth sewn shut. Mercifully, at least, Deadpool, or as fans came to call him Barackapool, given his resemblance to Mortal Kombat's Baraka, appeared to die at the film's end, with Wolverine using his claws to part the mutant's head from his body. But for anyone masochistic enough to sit through the end credits, it was revealed that the totally not Deadpool survived his decapitation as his hands are shown picking up his own head. Thankfully though, this outcome was well and truly jettisoned from the continuity in Deadpool 2, where the Merc with a Mouth travels back in time and shoots Baraka Pool dead once more, and hopefully forevermore. Phew. Number 4. Marshmallow – Frozen in Frozen, Marshmallow is the name of Elsa's enchanted snow monster that she creates to serve as her palace guard. At the end of the film, Marshmallow faces off against Prince Hans and his army, and while attempting to keep Elsa safe, ends up falling down a gorge to his presumed demise. It's a classically family-friendly Disney character death, fall from a great height in a way where you're presumed dead, but younger viewers will never have to see your gnarly remains. In this case, though, Marshmallow incredulously manages to survive his tumble, and in the film's post credit scene, he's shown limping back to the castle in surprisingly good shape for a relatively fragile creature that just fell hundreds of feet to the ground. Good going, mate. Number 3. Skeletor – Masters of the Universe I just, oh my god, this has to be the film's only high point. Uh, seriously, I love <laughs> Masters of the Universe, but this film is so bad. The end scene, though, where Skeletor emerges out of the water and just says, I'll be back, is absolutely size-splittingly hilarious. But most people didn't actually watch that far because th th they kind of turned it off halfway through because it, the rest of it's not that great. And you know what the weird thing is, though, is that even despite saying, I'll be back, you know, you know how he says it, uh, he actually didn't come back but at least we'll always have that heartwarming role made all the better by learning that the actor only did it for the sake of his four-year-old son and still considers it to be part of his all-time favorite roles. What a ledge. Number 2. Two-Face – Batman Forever Batman Forever sees the Cape Crusader facing off against both the Riddler and Two-Face, and though the Riddler ends up safely incarcerated within the padded walls of Arkham Asylum, Harvey Dent isn't quite so fortunate. Or so it seems. At the end of the movie, Batman foils Two-Face by throwing a fistful of coins at him, seemingly confusing him enough that he loses his balance and falls to his demise in the watery depths below. It's a fundamentally ridiculous scene, and we also just have to ignore the fact that Batman literally kills Two-Face. There's no way that he could have thrown those coins and not thought to himself he's going to fall from this and die. Like, he did this on purpose. But still, on the DVD commentary, Schumacher mentions that he deliberately included Two-Face's suit in Batman and Robin during the scene where Bane breaks into Arkham Asylum's storage facility and retrieves Mr. Freeze's wares. The intent was to imply that Dent had somehow survived his spectacular fall, even if many watching the film on their own terms would have likely just assumed it to be an Easter egg nodding to his existence. Still, during the commentary, Schumacher also noted that he didn't intend for Batman Batman to kill anyone in his films, and that because we never definitively see Dent's corpse, he is indeed supposed to be alive. So there we go, case closed. And number one, Colonel Quaritch, Avatar. And finally, we have Colonel Miles Quaritch, the primary antagonist of James Cameron's Avatar. As the head of the RDA's private security force, Quaritch spearheads human mining operations on Pandora with an iron fist, bringing him into immediate violent conflict with the moon's indigenous lifeforms, the Na'vi. At the film's end, Quaritch appears to be getting his fitting comeuppance, as before he's able to slit the throat of Jake's Avatar, he's killed with a few well-placed arrows to the chest. Game over. 
Oliver Wright? Well, wrong, apparently. With Cameron already deep into production of his four planned Avatar sequels, fans were surprised to hear that Stephen Lang will be reprising the role of Quaritch in all four sequels. Though the particulars of his survival or resurrection are completely unknown for now, Lang has confirmed in interviews that he is indeed still playing the same character, stating, It's very satisfying to know that the character was valued enough and made enough of an impression to bring him back. Lang did add that Quaritch has evolved, however, since the events of the first film, so could it be that he's received some sort of cybernetic or biological upgrade in order to survive? Well, we'll have to wait and see, but evidently until this point, he's anything but dead. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 movie characters that you didn't realize actually survived. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at not at RetroJ with a zero, but go follow me at Live and Let's Dice, L A L D, tweet, because that's where I do all of my tweeting about board games and my side project, Live and Let's Dice. It'd be great to get it off the ground, so thank you very much, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. As we know at the time of recording, it has been a tough year and potentially might be another tough year ahead, and all we need to do my friends is get through it and survive treat yourself with love and respect both mentally and physically because you are a big ledge and you deserve love happiness and success my friend we all do out there now go out there and absolutely smash your goals and let's get through this together as always i have been jules you have been awesome never forget that and i'll speak to you soon bye <laughs>